Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck deck, and today we have one of the most ridiculous historic decks I've seen in a while, a viewer submitted from Drizzle Hell, historic deck called Camelot, Camelot of all things, how are you Camelotting someone in magic, well that's what we're going to find out on today's instant deck deck, so I think this deck looks <laughs> just absolutely, it's really funny, it's really funny, it's really cute, and who knows, maybe it can even be good, so thanks so much to Drizzle Hell for sending in just a ridiculously sweet historic deck, and uh, let's Let's talk Camelot for Historic. So, uh, to understand this deck, I think we gotta just walk through its game plan. So, early game, our main plan is to put non-land mana sources on the battlefield. Land of War Elves, Paradise Druid, Mind Stone. These are all cards that are not lands, but they add plus one mana, essentially. Uh, and these do a couple things for our deck that'll become clear as we go along. Most obviously, they ramp us into our more expensive plays. Chromatic Ori, it's just kind of here for completion's sake. Uh, yes, it's not an early game ramp spell, but it is a very powerful ramp spell. Once we get up to seven mana, then it's absolutely insane. So these cards mostly ramp us in the early game. What are we ramping into? And our most important things to ramp into are these weird tax pieces. Tide Taker makes our opponent spells during our turn and their abilities cost one more mana. Archon and Absolution, Baird makes it so attacking us costs an extra mana. So these cards are actually kind of essential to the plan of our deck because what we're building towards is hopefully leaving our opponent without any mana. So our main combo of the deck, and this is where the deck gets really funny and fun, is a couple of sagas. Our most important one is Fall the Thran. Fall the Thran, uh, lore counter one, blows up all lands, then the next two lore counters returns two lands for each player to play. So kind of an Armageddon, but not a permanent Armageddon because those lands are going to be coming back. We also have Elspeth Conqueror's Death is kind of our backup saga. Exiling something, pretty good. Taxing our opponent's spells on theme with our deck. And then also reanimating something is a nice little bonus, but we're not really ever planning on having either of our sagas hit their last lore counter. What we're trying to do with this deck, and this is where our camel, Quarry Hauler, comes in, is use Quarry Hauler, this very weird forgotten common from Amiket, new to Arena Amiket Remastered, which when it comes into play, for each kind of counter under permanent, you can either add another counter or remove a counter. So so what we're trying to do is like play follow the thread. Lore counter number one destroys all lads. Then we can quarry hauler. Quarry hauler is going to put follow the thread back to zero counters. So then, guess what? On our next turn, it's going to destroy all lads. Same with Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Elspeth Conqueror's Death exiles a permanent. Quarry hauler comes into play, puts it back down to zero lore counters. Next turn, we get another lore counter, exile another permanent. So this kind of starts this weird engine with the last piece of the puzzle being our unicorn, Emil the Blessed. So Emil for three mana can blink a creature. So the idea is we get on our follow the thread. Maybe an Elspeth Conqueror's Death too. We quarry hauler to keep the lore counters on zero and keep getting the first lore counter ability every single turn by blinking quarry hauler with our Emil every turn. So the end result of this is going to be no one has lands forever. We never get to that second lore counter on Fall of the Thran. We get to keep exiling a permanent every turn with Elspeth Conqueror's Death. So that is the goal of the deck. That's what we're trying to set up, this permanent landlock, and that's what makes our taxing abilities that we talked about earlier, very powerful. Our opponent can't pay one mana to attack us because we have a Baird out or an Archon out because they're not going to have any mana. So our taxi abilities become much, much better once we get our lock set up and our opponent has no mana for the rest of the game. As far as actually killing our opponent if they don't just scoop to being locked out of the game by our camel, uh, we have Shalai, Voice of Plenty, just to grow our team and it gives our other stuff hexproof. None of the Reliquary is going to be super big because remember, we're going to blow up all our lands as well. If all the Thran is is symmetrical. That's the other reason all of our mana dorks, like our land war elves, our mind stones, our paradise druids, why they're so important. So we will still have mana to function, why our opponent will not. Knight of Autumn, kind of just a utility card, but a 4-3 three for 3 can be pretty good if we put counters on it for closing out the game. Otherwise, we have Karn the Great Creator, which is essentially in our deck to tutor things from our sideboard, including some more lock pieces. We have Godfarer Statue, which is just the hard lock. If we can get our main Vol the Thran lock set up and get Godfarer Statue down, 
out, making it cost two more for our point to cast spells. They're essentially just literally hard locked out of the game. They can't attack us with creatures because of our bears and our archons. They can't cast spells because they have no lands and we have a God Pharaoh statue. And then we don't even really need to attack. We could just let God Pharaoh statue drain our opponent out of the game slowly. Grafdinger's Cage, good against goblins. Tormod's Crypt for Gaveyard decks. Ratchet Bomb, Glass Casket for removal. Mox Amber, another way to generate mana because like Baird is legendary. Some of our other creatures, Shalai is legendary. So another way we can make mana after we have the Armageddon Camel Lock set up. Another Chromatic Ori, Amulet of Safekeeping for token decks. Otherwise on the sideboard, Nine Lives is actually pretty cute with our main lock. Remember, Quarry Hauler can remove any kind of counter from any permanent when it comes into play. So if we get Nine Lives down and we keep Blinky Quarry Hauler with a meal, we can just keep removing any counters from Nine Lives, making ourselves like semi-infinite forever. So another way we cannot die once we get the lock set up. Leyline of Sanctity for burn spells and discard spells. Mana base wise, mostly common boring stuff, just mana fixing stuff. Although, Cascadia Cataracts, actually pretty sweet because it doesn't get blown up. It's indestructible. So it's a land that survives our Fall of the Thran lock. So another way we can break the symmetry of Fall of the Thran, make sure we have mana when our opponent does not. And that is the absurdity of Camel Lock for Historic. And that's been our instant deck tech for today. So thanks again to Drizzle Hell for sending you this awesome historic deck. And thanks to everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.